Good morning. This set of notes is for precalculus and it's on the topic of solving systems. We're going to be going over substitution method, linear combination method, and graphical method. So those are our three main methods for solving systems. Uh, substitution method is the first one we're going to cover. And substitution method is usually a good idea when you have uh, what I like to call the lonely only, which is just an, ex an expression that has a, a 1x or a 1y in it that makes it easy to solve for. Your basic process is you're going to substitute one equation into the other. Now you'll have an equation with only one variable instead of two. So you will solve this equation. And then you'll take your result and you will substitute your result back into the first equation and solve. When you're solving linear systems, you're solving in x and y, so your answer is going to be an ordered pair. An ordered pair simply means that the x and the y come together. So if you have an x and a y, they're separated by a comma and put in parentheses. By the way, if you have a cap and a lowercase, capital goes first, lowercase goes second. If you have a subscript, unless you know otherwise, the subscript 1 goes before the subscript 2. So ordered pair is generally alphabetical from capital to not capital, and then for just in order of subscript. Okay, so we're going to do an example of substitution method. Here's our equation. 2y plus x equals 4. 3x minus 4y equals 7. Now this is an ideal equation for substitution method because we have our lonely only right there. That's a 1x. So we're going to take that first equation and we're going to solve it for x. So we'll subtract 2y to the other side. So 4 minus 2y. This now we're going to substitute back into the first equation for the x. We're going to replace the x. So we have 3 times 4 minus 2y minus 4y equals 7. Use your parentheses wisely. All right, so this is where we're on step 3. You're going to solve this. It will almost always start by distributing the 3. So 12 minus 6y minus 4y is 7. Normally now you will simplify because you have like terms. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. So 12 minus 10y is 7. Continuing to solve, we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. You get negative 10y equals negative 5. To get y by itself, you want to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 10 which is 1 over negative 10. The negative 10's divide out. And you have a negative 5 over negative 10, which reduces to a positive 1 half. Now that we have y, we're going to take our answer and we're going to substitute it back into the original equation. If you put a box around the first equation that you solve, it's much easier to figure out where you need to put your answer. It's just a nice visual cue. So let's sub that in. 4 minus 2 times a half. Again, I'm using my parentheses when I replace the y. And really, this is just now simplifying. So 2 divides into 2 one time. x is 4 minus 1. So x is a 3. So your answer is an ordered pair. The x comes first. That's 3. The y comes second. That's a half. And that is substitution method. Okay, so the second method we're going to learn is linear combination method. 
So Roman numeral two, linear combination. All right, so linear combination method um, is used typically if there is no lonely only. They're all, everything has a coefficient on it, so if you were to do a substitution method, it would be a real mess because it would be lots of fractions and all kinds of crazy stuff. So what is the process? Okay, so linear combination, you choose a variable to eliminate. X or Y. Once you've chosen what you want to eliminate, you're going to multiply one or both equations uh, by typically whole, a whole number. So that when they are added, one variable adds up to zero. So linear combination has some, sometimes been called addition method because you, you change the equation so that when you add them, things go up to zero. So linear combination, addition method, um, there's some other names, but you can usually figure those out. So um, just for example, you would multiply one or both equations so that you might have a positive 2x on one equation and a negative 2x on the other. So they add up to zero. Or maybe you attack the y's first. Multiply both equations by your selected number and you might have a positive 10y and a negative 10y. So when you add the equations, the y's go to zero. All right, let's do an example. Uh, 2x minus 4y equals 13, and 4x minus 5y equals 8. This is a good one for linear combination because there isn't anything easy to solve for. There's no lonely only. So we're going to just start by picking what we want to eliminate. We are going to eliminate the x's. We want them to add up to 0 without our numbers getting huge. So if I were to make that 2x into a negative 4x, it would add up to 0. So I'm going to take that first equation, and I'm going to multiply everything in there by a negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2 times that top equation. Don't forget the right-hand side. So when we do that, our new equation is negative 4x plus 8y equals negative 26. So now we're going to take the first equation, just recopy it, not change it. So 4x minus 5y equals 8. And this is where the linear combination happens. We're going to add this up. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. That variable is gone. 8 minus 5 is 3y. Negative 26 plus 8 is a negative 18. Continue solving. So multiply by the reciprocal. We're going to multiply by 1 third on both sides. And y equals negative 18 over 3, which is negative 6. That is our first answer. All right, so now that we have eliminated the x's, now we're going to eliminate the y's. So let me just rewrite the equations here. 2x minus 4y is 13. 4x minus 5y is 8. So on our second pass, we want to eliminate y's. I have a negative 4 and a negative 5. The lowest number that a 4 and a 5 will go into is a 20. So I want one of them to be a positive 20 and one of them to be a negative 20. So I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to multiply by a positive 5. So that gives us 10x minus 20y equals 65. And then the second one, I'm going to multiply. I'm looking for a, negative, a positive 20. I'm going to multiply by negative 4. So negative 16x plus 20y equals negative 32. Draw a line. Now we're ready to add them up for linear combination. 
negative 20 plus 20 is 0, it goes away. 10 minus 16 is a negative 6x equals 65 minus 35, which is 33. All right, get the x by itself. So we're going to multiply by 1 over negative 6 on both sides. x equals. Now, I can tell I can pull a 3 out of these. So I'm going to go ahead and just prime factor rather than stack it and then take it apart again. So 33 is 3 times 11. Uh, negative 6 is negative 1 times 2 times 3. 3's divide out. You always move the negative up. I get negative 11 halves. So my answer is an ordered pair. Negative 11 halves, negative 6. And there you have it. Okay, so those are the basic two processes. Um, we're going to, in Roman numeral 3, we're going to go into what the graphs look like. So graphical, graphical solutions. Now I'm not going to take the time to completely graph these out because you already know how to graph lines. Um, but you do need to remember what you see and what it means. So I'm going to show you some examples. Um, here's an example. The system is 2x minus y equals 2 x plus y equals negative 2. So of course if we were going to take the time to graph this you would want to solve for y. Put it into y equals mx plus b. Pick your three x values. Plot those. Use a straight edge. Draw a line through it. Same thing with the second one. Solve for y. Pick your x values. Calculate points and plot them and put a line through them. So When we, when we do this, and again, I know this is not going to be super exact, um, you have a line that's coming down, and you have a line that's coming up, and they intersect at the point 0, negative 2. The definition of a solution is an answer that satisfies the equations. So you need a point that satisfies both equations. In other words, it works if you plug it in. So the only point that is actually on both lines, that satisfies both lines, is this one. So when two equations intersect, their point of intersection is the solution. Um, and in this case, we're only going to have one solution, uh, because that is the one and only one point that works. Now, if we have to check our solution, all we do is substitute in. So I'm going to check it in the first equation. 2 times 0 minus a negative 2, does that equal positive 2? And when you check, remember, double lines do not cross, just simplify. So I have 0 plus 2. So yeah, this works in the first equation, we're good. Now we're going to check it in the second equation, this one. So 0 plus a negative 2, is that equal to negative 2? Negative times a positive is a negative. So yes, it works in that equation as well. This is why this point is the solution. That's what you're going to get most of the time. Vast majority of the time, you will get an answer for two lines. Um, sometimes though, you'll get something unusual. Here's an example of an unusual answer. The equation is 3x plus 2y equals 3 and 3x plus 2y equals negative 4. If you were to plot these two equations, you can see that there's something fishy because they have so much in common. What you're going to end up with, and again, this is approximate. I'm not, I'm not plotting specifically. What you're going to end up with is two lines that have the same slope but never cross. If they never cross, they don't share any points. If they don't share any points, there is no solution to the system. So this would be a no solution answer. 
if you wanted to check your answers um, by substitution method or linear combination, you would be solving, 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 and you'd end up with something like 2 equals 3, where there are no more variables, and what's left does not make sense. In that case, you know it is a no solution. All right, and then the last one I want to show you, this is the easiest one. Uh, given the equation x minus y equals negative 3, and 2x minus 2y equals negative 6, if you were to plot these, I'm almost out of space here, what would happen is you would plot the first one, and then when you plotted the second one, it would be the exact same line. So if it's the same line, it means they share all points with each other. Every one of the points that they share is a solution. So for this one, it would be an infinite number of solutions. Because they share all point, all points, so they have infinite, infinite solutions. Same line. Uh, if you solve this for in the form uh, y equals mx plus b, you'll be able to compare. This is standard form, aka useless form. You really can't tell in that form. Um, you have to solve for y. This one, you can definitely compare answers to each other and see if they're the same. All right, last thing I want to mention, this is more of a tip than anything else, is it is perfectly fine to reduce or simplify before solving. And I'm talking solving algebraically. So for example, if you were trying to solve 4x minus 8y equals 32 and 16x plus 18y equals 48, those numbers are huge. So rather than be solving with gigantic numbers, um, you can adjust the equations. I believe a 4 will come out of everything, so I'll multiply both sides by a fourth. And then that would be a 1x minus 2y equals 8. Much nicer equation to deal with. Um, this one, 18 is 2 times 9. 16 is not divisible by 3. So I can take a 1 half out of all of all three of these. So that will give me an 8x plus a 9y equals 24. And now I have two equations that are much, much, much easier to solve and uh, easier to deal with. Uh, you could also potentially, if there are fractions, you could clear fractions to make your equation easier. All right, I hope that you have a good time doing these. They're a lot of fun. And thank you for listening.